Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Canadians Abroad. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming. I will be joined by my colleague, Alex Gongay ruzik and today we are playing a little game called Stock Up. We will also be taking a look at the Canadian women's national team and their World Cup roster, and we'll be talking about Ismail Kone scoring against Arsenal. So hopefully you guys are excited, and if you are, let's get into the episode now. All right, Alex, we are fresh off watching the Canadian men's national team get eliminated by the U.S. in the quarterfinals of the 2023 Gold Cup. And I know that there was a lot of good, a lot of bad from this tournament, but today we are going to focus on the good. We are going to focus on the stock ups from some of the players in this tournament. And we are going to start with Ali Ahmed because I don't think there's a debate. If there's one breakout star, it was him. Yeah, absolutely. I think this tournament for Canada the past few editions uh, it's been a chance to to see new players for the first time. It's where Alfonso Davies, it's Jonathan David, sh you know, showed what they can do. It's what Tejan Buchanan, Stefan Ustakio, uh did as well. And I think Ali Ahmed proved that he could be a potential contributor to Canada's first team in this tournament, playing in midfield, but also deputizing out at fullback. He can run at defenders. He can. He wants to get on the ball. He wants to make things happen. He plays without fear. So his stock is absolutely rising. I think he'll be fascinating to see now if he can leverage this into a first team opportunity opportunity what he could do for Canada and then of course this is going to help at club because he gets his chance for country he'll head back to the white caps now hopefully filled with confidence and who knows maybe this will uh you know maybe push him to, to Europe eventually down the road yeah the biggest thing you and I were excited for for this tournament was an opportunity for someone to step up Tejan Buchanan was the player in the last gold cup who had the opportunity with the Canadian national team he took it he went from that gold cup right into our a squad and he's not leaving probably anytime soon and of course got his move to Europe I think Ali Ahmed could definitely do that and just imagine that three-man midfield with Eustachio, Kone and Ahmed definitely one to make some Canadian fans excited but the next player we are going to take a look at is Dane St. Clair now a lot of fans wanted to see him start this tournament he didn't get to start because Borean had the first two matches but Borean left with injury the opportunity went to Dane St. Clair and I think it's fair to say despite maybe a shaky match against Cuba we were always in control and he came up big against the U.S. despite unfortunately getting knocked out in penalties. Yeah, Dane Sinclair just showed uh, why he can, you know, he's a good goalkeeper and why uh, many people are excited about him. He's a big frame, he covers the net well and he's he's got good footwork and uh, he's also good on the ball. We maybe didn't see it as much in the U.S. game where, you know, nerves and just Canada sitting back a little deep made it tough on him. Um, but that's also an asset to his game. So it was good just that he was able to, at least on the shot stopping side, show a lot of good. And even he had some glimpses on the ball where you saw a bit of that 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 quality and showed that he's someone to, to look at for Canada because he, you know, with his size, with his speed off the line, he could be someone that could could allow Canada to play a bit more aggressively defensively going forward. And uh, he showed that with the, just some of these big stops he was able to make. I definitely agree with that though. A lot of fans were very disappointed with his distribution. That's a small sample size, guys. He is an incredible shot stop stopper, but he's also very good with the ball. Just watch a few of his games with Minnesota. This one, not the best for him, but it's not something I'd worry about. The next player, though, we will focus on is the mullet man himself, Jacob Schaffelberg. Now, he didn't get the opportunity to play probably as much as a lot of us thought he was going to, but in that match against the U.S., he came off the bench and he looked incredible. He had a shift defensively. The goal showed that the way he tracked back, got the ball, went forward, took on defenders 1v1. That incredible hit. Maybe a little unfair he didn't get more minutes in this tournament, but definitely something he can build on going forward. Absolutely, and I think uh, Jacob Schaffelberg showed he can be a man for the moment, and something has to be said about just the clutch he showed uh, uh, wanting to come into a game. You know, it could have had every reason to be nervous, a big occasion. He's like, no, I want to take this game over. I want to make a special moment, uh, and, and something has to be said for that, plus his speed. Uh, is always going to be huge ass and he's just shown this year at Nashville he's a different player he's always had that speed he's always had that drive but he just has this quality in his final product that he's developed in, in Nashville where he can just come in he needs one shot he only needs that one moment to to put it away so he's someone where for Canada maybe he might not start start given some of who he's up against up front and uh, out wide uh, for, for Canada, but he's someone where you can bring him off a game and he'll destabilize it. And I think he, that he was able to show that was key and something to look at. Yeah, definitely coming off the bench against tired legs could be a big addition for the men's national team. The next player is a little bit more, uh, like th if this is a stock up, it's maybe just a s stock up, a slow burn. That's Moise Belmbito. This is a player who's very raw. We know that this is his first season right now in Major League Soccer with the Colorado Rapids. He's been playing as an outside left center back, right center back, left back, left wing back, but he featured mostly as a center or as a CDM, as a six, 
with the men's national team. And there were some questionable performances, especially against Cuba, getting yanked off after 33. But he put in a very good shift against the U.S. men's national team. He's definitely won for the future. I'm still convinced he should be playing as an outside center back. I think that's where you're going to find the best at him. But whether it's as a six or as an outside center back, he's one that hopefully Herman can integrate into the first team. Yeah, absolutely. I think the stock market, what's great about it is you, you're always going to have your high risers, you know, the, the ones you'll see, you know what to put in. But sometimes you have to, to put some money on some slow burners. And I think uh, Bombito, he showed this term in a glimpse of what he could bring, especially I think I, I would invest a heavily in that stock of him at center back. He showed on um, just small glimpses that he can be quick. He's got size. He he can take guys on 1v1. He can be good in the air and that, that half against Guatemala that he got to play at center back. Um, so that's one I'd definitely invest in because Canon needs profiles like that desperately at the back. But also, you know, I, I am interested to see how he develops at midfield just because he did also have show a bit of natural ability on the ball uh, that you just you can't teach and, and that he has in his locker. It's going to take time if he is to convert into a midfielder. I think we saw off the ball there are a few moments where he got lost defensively. He left his marker alone. So that's one where I'd want to see, you know, a, a season, a two seasons of him working at that position before I could say he could play there regularly for Canada. But certainly at center back, watch out for his stop. He did have about 45 minutes at center back in this tournament. And in my opinion, that's where he looked his best, his most comfortable. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But he's one of the young players. So now we're going to shift to one of the veterans. Now, not every veteran had a very confident and successful Gold Cup. Borean and Cavallini were two in my eyes that kind of struggled a little bit. But you can't really say the same for Junior Hoylet. I thought that he had a very strong tournament, his distribution, his leadership. He did everything right. He played mostly as a second striker in this tournament. But again, I thought he was at his best when we were playing in that 4-4-2 against Cuba and he was pushed out wide. Definitely a stock up in my eyes. But what did you like most about him in this tournament? He just continues to age like a fine wine. And what I love about watching Junior Hoylet is just how much he's matured as a player. I remember when he was a, a young winger who would just run at guys and be absolutely bombastic. But he has this finesse about his game now where he can slow it down, play at his pace, uh, and, and just retain the ball and make things happen. And that's key because I think uh, that's something where you can always use a bit of that veteran sort of quality. And Canada's going to need some veterans to stick around for the 2026 cycle. Uh, and, and I think among them, he might be one of the best options to, to, to look at because he looks like someone who can play with faster guys, but he can play in slower games. He can, because he's always playing the game to, to his tempo. So for Canada's going to need some veterans to carry along some of these young guys. Junior Horlitz stepped up incredibly as a leader on and off the pitch and deserves a a look in this gold cup showed that the last player we are going to talk about is another veteran player whose stock rose and that is richie larea he was an engine this entire tournament always getting up to pitch maybe that final ball wasn't there but you can't deny what he did both offensively and defensively and he's definitely going to be one that will continue to be with his national team for quite some time Absolutely. I think it's important to shout out Larea because he's so easy to forget with how consistent he is. He never seems to have a bad game, right? He's always a 7 out of 10 and players like that uh, are, are very undervalued because sometimes you might lose them in the shine of a bigger game. So shout out to Larea for having a big tournament. That consistency is remarkable. He's always going to have a place on the national team if he continues to, to bring that. And especially with the, an uncertain club future, if he can make a good move, make a move to that right spot, he'll continue to push to be a starter. And at the very least, if you have a guy like Richie Loria for depth, you're never doing it bad for Canada. So good to see him step up in that regard uh, with the younger players. Absolutely. And that's the best part about these international tournaments. It gives a player an opportunity to really shine. I think Richie did that. His club future, like you mentioned, is up in the air. But if he does have that ambition to go back to Europe, I think that he's shown what he's doing right now at TFC and with the national team that there could be a spot over there for him. The Canadian Women's National Team released their World Cup roster on July 9th. And Alex, a lot of talented players are on that list. What did you make of the roster? Any big surprises for you? Yeah, I think it was overall a lot of as expected for Canada. I think we saw a lot of uh, what we're going to see during the, this World Cup down in Australia for them. Strong at the back. Uh, you know, you you got Vanessa Gill and Kadisha Buchanan leading the way at the back. You got Kaylin Sheridan, goal Ashley Lawrence. That backline is going to be formidable. You see in the midfield, Jesse Fleming, Julia Grosso leading the way. Um, obviously, it was unfortunate to see Desiree Scott ruled out with injury. That's a big blow. 
but up front also good news to see Michelle Prince and Deanne Rose included. Uh, you know, even though we don't know how much they'll be able to play, I was a bit surprised not to see a Clarissa Laracy slot in, um, nor uh, a Mary Yasmin Aladu in midfield because Canada's depth is a bit thin in midfield. Although Christine Sinclair, I think this might be the the tournament for her to really drop into that midfield role. She she plays for Portland, so those were may maybe my surprise uh, on the exclusions. But as for the inclusions, uh, very fascinated to see Olivia Smith in over Laracy because she's a very fascinating uh, young prospect to keep an eye on. And while Jade Rose being out injured last minute means Gabriel Carl comes in, which is also another intriguing addition at the back. Now, this is the fun part about my job is I can surprise Alex every time I want to. And Chloe Lacasse is a player that I'm going to keep an eye on. I think she could be in for a massive tournament. She got this move now to Arsenal and I'm excited and hopeful that she will start. So Alex, you just mentioned a ton of names. I'm going to put you on the spot. So build me your projected or your ideal projected starting 11. For sure. I think uh, we're likely going to see Canada play a 4-3-3. That's kind of what they preferred. So I'd say Sheridan gets in goal. It's going to be uh, Buchanan on the right of a uh, back four and Gilles at, at the left. That's an incredible uh, center back pairing among the best in the world. And you got Ashley Lawrence will likely play on the left with Jade Riviere on the right. Um, although Alicia Chapman sometimes will slot in on the left with Lawrence on the right. But I think based on what we saw, the preference for Priestman has been Lawrence Riviere, and then I think midfield three, Gimme Quinn holding it down at the six with Grosso on the left side of midfield as an eight, and then Jesse Fleming as the other eight. Also, sometimes Grosso might drop back. It'll be a double pivot underneath Fleming in the 10. Uh, and then up front, I want to see Chloe Lacasse start on one of the wings. I think Deanne Rose looks to be the fitter of the, the two between Rose and Prince. You could also throw Adriana Leone in there, but I want to see her maybe super sub just to start after her, her club situation. And then I think leading the line would be Jordan Hoytema, though Evelyn Vian is very close and could also get a show. Now we talked about surprise packages at tournaments. We just said that Ali Ahmed did that for the men. We know that Buchanan did it in the Gold Cup. Every tournament for every club has an opportunity for someone to rise to the occasion. Who will be your kind of surprise package or maybe breakout star you think that every Canadian should watch out for for these women? Yeah, I think the, the the player that we'll have to keep a close eye on is, is Olivia Smith because she's kind of the the new face in, in this squad. A lot of this squad we've seen, I mean, although you could certainly give Vian a shout as a breakout star, you, you could give Gilles a breakout shout just because this is her first World Cup, which feels wild to, to say. But I think Olivia Smith is a fascinating one because she's just 18. Uh, she she re recently announced she's going to make the jump to, to pro after just one season in, in the NCAA, which is a big... Uh, you know, move from her. She's played at the U20 level for a while now. She scored at last, uh, you know, 2022's U20 World Cup as a 17-year-old. Uh, well, she was 18, but she was just had just turned 18, and she's still eligible for the next U20 World Cup. That's how young uh, she is. She was the youngest ever Canadian to play for the national team back in 20, uh, you know, 19, 2020, I think it was. So she's been someone who's, uh, you know, one of those young players who could really step onto the scene. And if Canada can get her minutes, I'd love to see what she can do with the opportunity now the big question mark for me is christine sinclair a canadian legend the goat i would say is, is probably a fair statement what is your expectations around her role this tournament because i, I don't know if you expect her maybe to start the odd game if she impacts up what, what what do you think around her i think she uh she she still has a role to play because you know she's winning trophies regularly with the portland thorns playing a big role so it shows that you can win games with, with Christine Sinclair. I mean, again, Canada also won the Olympics, but I think what's clear is that her role is not the same it was five, ten years ago. And I think for Canada, uh, they'll just have to manage. I think one thing that's been clear with the Thorns is that she's a 60-minute player these days. Um, so do you believe those 60 minutes you want to start and then bring fresh legs, or do you want to use her as the last 30-minute kind of player? That will be up to Bev Priestman. And I'd also like to see her maybe play a little deeper in midfield. She's shown with the Thorns that she has a very good intelligence with picking out the final pass, something that Canada has struggled with. So I'd like to see Sinclair in a 60-minute role, maybe a little deeper on the pitch. And I think she'll thrive, and I think that will allow Canada to get some of their dynamic attackers on the pitch. Moving on now to the Canadian quick hit section of the episode today, and we only have one for you. It's Ismail Kone. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, even though it feels like the dust has just settled on a great European season, starting back up again, and Ismail Kone has been in preseason with Watford, and he got off to a great start as they played 
a friendly against Arsenal, featuring a few first team regulars, including Gabriel Jesus uh, and, and others. He scored in a 1 1 draw. So keep an eye out on Ismail Kone. He looks uh, someone who's refreshed, ready to, to go. And he, he's going to have an interesting summer. Either he ends up with Watford, his first full season with the club, and attacks the championship with vigor, or sounds like there could be some links with Udinese, who also own Watford. So either way, big summer ahead for Ismail Kone. That is all the time we have for in this edition of Canadians Abroad. I really hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to tune in for next week's update.